Alright everybody, happy Friday and welcome to a new vlog. Um, last vlog I made my Christmas dress, my like actual Christmas dress. And today we're doing something magical. I'm super excited. Uh, today we are starting my 2020 holiday Disney princess dress. Uh, if you have seen the 2020 holiday Disney princess Barbie line, uh, the aerial dress is gorgeous. I, I have literally never wanted to make an aerial cosplay. Ariel's just not, like I don't dislike Ariel, but she's, I identify more with Belle. Um, so Belle has always been my go-to princess, but this dress is just so beautiful. So we're gonna be recreating it. And the reason we're starting it today is because, and it's on an ugly puddle on the floor, I got, the skirt fabric in the mail today. Let me pull it up. It is this beautiful blue and gold brocade. And you can see on the skirt that Ariel has uh, this gold brocade. And I also got, I also got this faux fur trim to go around the edges. And somewhere in this mess, I have the, uh, blue satin for the overlay and the only thing that I have left that I need is the blue velvet for the top. Uh, now the pattern that I am using uh, is this. I'm going to make some changes to this as we go. I'm going to be altering the neckline and the sleeves a little bit because they're open and aerials aren't open, they just flare out. And I'm obviously not going to be doing this, like, different colored shenaniganery here. Uh, and there will be no ruffly butt, because uh, that's, not, that's not a thing that I'm interested in. Uh, but we will be working on this through the duration of the next vlog. And right now I'm working on cutting out the massive skirt panels. Those, that's a skirt panel. That's two skirt panels. And this is pieces for the bodice that I'm just trying to cut out so I can fold them back up and put them back in the envelope so that I can do a mock-up later. Um, so we're gonna work on... We're gonna work on the skirt uh, and probably building a mock-up of the bodice this weekend. And then on Monday my corset supplies should arrive and that's what I'm building the corset for is to go under this because I, shockingly, uh, I'm not built like a Barbie, so whatever bodice I have needs some sort of like actual structure because I'm not made of rigid plastic. So that's the thing that we're going to be working on. I'm hoping that I can finish it before Christmas so I can post pictures of me wearing it on Christmas Day. I do have a really janky aerial wig, so that'll get styled at some point. Maybe. <laughs> Either that or we're just going to like dye my hair red and we're going to go with it. Anyway, here we go. So, I've laid out the front panel and the uh, side panel, and I don't think I'm going to have enough as it is for the back panel, but the back part of the skirt is going to cover that, so I'm just going to piece it and, and Frankenstein it and make it work. Um, the important part in the back is having the fullness, having it be narrow at the waist and then full at the bottom, so that's not a huge issue. Uh, so, I'm going to cut these two pieces out and then figure out how I'm going to put the back together. All right, so we have some skirt back. Uh, forgive the, the hair. I am setting my hair in an attempt to have something that isn't a boring ponytail tomorrow to take pictures of the uh, berry dress. But I wanted to show you where we are with the skirt. I have skirt pieces cut out there. And I have the skirt back here. And happy birthday balloon from Emma. All right, so what I did with the skirt um, was you can see the seam here and across here. Uh, that's on both back panels and it's kind of making it hang wonky, but it is what it is. Um, and basically what I did was I just laid some fabric uh, like overlapping itself when I was cutting and then let's see if I can flip it up so you can see the inside. Um, 
I just folded it over so like I didn't even make a seam I just folded it over so there are the raw edges of the the pieces um, and then I top stitched it together because again this part's all gonna get covered up and you can't even because of the way that the pleats are you can't even really see this seam because it gets mostly hidden in the pleating of the fabric and then that's not super noticeable but again it's going to be covered up um what i am noticing about this fabric is it frays like crazy so i'm going to be assembling the rest of the skirt with French seams, with the exception of the pockets, because we have an actual side seam, because this is going to be a pleat. Uh, so that will be at the actual side, so I'm going to put a pocket there. So, what I'm going to do is, I am going to cut out pocket pieces, and instead of doing any kind of seam finishing, because this is 100% polyester, I'm going to use fire. So I'm going to seam finish, uh, edge finish the, the edges of the pocket by burning them because it's polyester, so it's not actually going to burn, it's going to melt, and then it won't fray. It's kind of like finishing polyester ribbon instead of like sewing it, you can just burn it uh, and melt the edges. So that's what I'm going to do with the pockets because they're pain in the butt to finish otherwise. So I'm going to see how far I get tonight. All right, so as I'm sewing, I realize I should come on and give you guys a quick tip. Um, so I'm sewing together the skirt, and I'm starting and lining everything up at the waist seam, um, at the, the waistband, and then I'm sewing down to the bottom of the skirt, because if it's not level, like you can see here, pieces are not level at the hem, but that's okay, because I'm going to need to level off the hem anyway and adjust that. So where I need it to be even is up here. If it's not even down here, that's going to get adjusted anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I just wanted to share that in case anyone is having issues. Because um, if you start at the hem and you sew up and then your waist measurements are off or your waist seam is off then you're gonna have a lot more issues than if your hem is off it's a lot easier to fix your hem anyway that's it for tonight I will check in tomorrow all right happy Saturday everybody uh, remember how I had rollers in my hair last night yeah my hair is braided for a reason didn't work um, but for the skirt, I did want to show you. I have the front panels all sewn together, and I've mocked up the pleating, and the pattern wants me to do this like gather situation here, but I think I'd rather the front be flat. So I think I'm gonna adjust the pleats in order for this to, to lay flat, because I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it would look better if it was just a flat across the front. Um, but I like the way it's draping, I like the way it's laying. Now I'm working on putting a French seam in the back. And if you don't know what that is, basically you sew the fabric together with the wrong sides together, and then you trim that down to like basically nothing. Press it and then you fold it over and you sew it again so that this is all encased and you don't have to worry about raw edges or rubbing on anything because the goal I think in order for this to have the shape that I want it to have I think I'm going to need to put a, a a hooped structure underneath that um, but I'm going to wait until the corset materials arrive they should arrive on Monday um, and get the bodice done and then see about uh, underpinnings that go with the corset. That's gonna be a little bit more expensive, the hoop skirt, because the hoop wire is expensive, um, but it's something that I will use for multiple costumes because I have lots of big fluffy dress plans. Uh, yeah, and you can see I'm wearing wearing the dress and I got to the pockets and it's super cute and comfy, which is why I haven't changed out of it even though I undid my hair, because no. <laughs> uh, 
it didn't work and I did something that kind of looked halfway decent, but that's that's about done now. Um, so I am gonna go finish working on this and hope that I don't get cancer from ironing this fabric and I will check in soon. All right, so here is the finished back panel. Um, I have sewn the back seam together and this is where the closure is gonna be. Um, and then you can see where I did the piecing and there's a double line of stitching there and then it comes over uh, to where this was pieced together and there's a double line of stitching there and that's because it was hurting my brain to try to sew the uh, pieces together so I just top stitched them I folded one of them over and top stitched it and then I folded the, the seam allowance over on itself and, and stitched it down. So it's basically felt, but I did it by machine because honestly, hand sewing this fabric seems like it would be a pain in the patookas because there are like, it's really textured and not very densely woven. So it's catching on things and it's causing it to fray. And I feel like trying to hand sew that would be a nightmare. Like if I come in really closely, you can see, yeah, you can see all of the, all of the threads here. Like these are threads that would then catch on things because they're loose. Um, and that's one of the problems you run into with brocade. Like that's just kind of how it goes. Um, but yeah, so I am going to sort out. Oh, I wanted to talk about the closure. Hang on. So just as a quick PSA, I wanted to talk a little bit about patterns um, and their instructions. Some of the instructions are necessary and some of them are optional. So like for this, it's having you finish, here's the waistband of the skirt and then you fold it in half and interface it and all of that is like fine and good. And then you get down here and it says, apply metal eyelets to waistband at small circles following the manufacturer's instructions. So it wants you to put eyelets in and lace the skirt. And let me tell you something. <laughs> That's not happening. I understand like they, they want the bodice to lace and I think they want the bodice and the skirt to like look cohesive. And so they're trying to do it that way. I'm gonna put a dress hook in the waistband. I'm not lacing it because it's gonna add bulk and it also makes it so that it's not adjustable. Like once you put eyelets in a waistband, you can't move it. Like, there's no, like, I've gained weight, I need to let it out a little bit. I've lost weight, I need to take it in a little bit. There's none of that. So that's not happening. We're using a dress hook. And if you want to go rogue when you're following a pattern and do your own thing, do it. <laughs> because these things, um, they're more like guidelines anyway, to quote Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyway, here we go. All right, let's talk pocket patterns because I can, in fact, put a pocket in the side seam of this dress. Um, so I am using this pattern piece for a pocket, which is my standard pocket pattern. It's nice and big, as you can see. It fits my phone very nicely. What I like about this pocket is this bit gets sewn into the waistband so the entire weight of the pocket is supported by the waistband and not the side seam which is incredibly frustrating because it makes your dress droop weirdly um this pocket pattern came out of this skirt pattern um and when i made this skirt i realized how amazing the pockets were and i was like forget it i'm never making a skirt without pockets again and i'm gonna use this pattern so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this a little bit differently um, because this fabric is horrendously frayy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut out four of these, um, the front and the back of each pocket uh, for each side. And then I am going to use fire <laughs> to burn the edges of the pocket so that they won't fray rather than seam finishing them because seam finishing pockets is kind of a pain in the patookas anyway all right so um we're gonna be burning 
the edges of the pocket to finish the edges so they don't fray. I'm using a long stemmed lighter and I'm doing this over the sink and I have supervision. <laughs> there's another grown up here. Um, there's water right here just in case there's like an accident, accident um, bowl so we don't drop it in the sink which is disgusting. Uh, <laughs> And I'm wearing an apron to protect my clothes. Uh, hopefully this doesn't end in tears. Um, but here we go. So. Short edge first. And you can see that this is 100% polyester because it's just melting. It's not even like singeing. <laughs> there, there's no smoke. It's just melted plastic now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that around all of the edges of the pocket. And this smells fantastic, by the way. And if you know me and you think I shouldn't be playing with fire, you're not wrong. Sorry, Mom. All right, so there's one pocket done. You can see it got a little wrinkled there, but it's going to be a pocket. It's inside. No one's going to see it. Um, and then none of these edges are going to fray. All right, so now we're done. We have four melted edge finished pocket pieces. I'm going to go and I'm going to sew them. Uh, right sides together and then insert them in the side seams. Um, so I wanted to show you where I am. I am, I've melted the pockets, I've attached the pockets. Um, the pockets are attached just where the side seam is going to be. So I attached them right sides facing each other and I did this on this one. Giant mountain of fabric. And you can see I just stitched it on and then I pressed it open and then I understitched. So I'm stitching the seam allowance down to the pocket so that the pop pocket fabric doesn't want to like flip out of the pocket. Not that it matters because the way that this skirt is going to be arranged is going to be inside of a pleat, but it just makes it lay nicer and it's easier to deal with and, and it'll end up with a nicer finished product. And then when I start doing the French seams um, <clears throat> on the edge of the fabric, I will pin it together and then show you what I'm doing. All right, so here's where we are. I've laid the pieces together, the wrong sides together to do the French seam, but I didn't do the pocket. I just stitched on either side right up to the edge of the pocket and then all the way down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the edge of this, I'm gonna press it open then I'm gonna flip it so that it is right uh, right sides together. And then we're gonna stitch all the way around. And I'm gonna stitch down about down about two inches, and then I'll stitch up about two inches to leave a gap here ish for my hand to get in the pocket because this is already sewn together so it's just making sure that that's actually gonna be able to have my hand my hand go in yeah all right I'm in my corset and well I have pleated the skirt I pleated it on on Daisy here and but Daisy and I are not the same uh, she is plastic and she is not squishy and I am squishy um, and I'm wearing my corset mock-up because I don't have the final of the corset but I'm going to try the skirt on because the point of making the corset is that I will wear it underneath the dress because as I talked about before previously I am not a Barbie and I'm not made of hard plastic so therefore I need a support structure undergarment so let's see if this actually fits and there's a pin
it's gonna happen. Okay. Um. Well, it's a good problem to have, but. Uh, yeah. I gotta make the bleeds bigger. So uh, I'm gonna have Zach put down the camera and help me figure out how much of this I need to take out. <laughs> okay, so now it's not gonna fall off, which is good. Um, Zach pinned the closure point closed uh, and then we had to take out, I would say probably like maybe an inch of fabric. Um, it ended up being like half an inch on either side, but it's a lot. So I need to uh, retake my measurements in this and remeasure Daisy because I thought that Daisy's waist was set to my corseted waist measurement. Apparently not. Uh, so yeah, uh, so the next steps are to, to finish the pleating and then I'm going to put on, I need to finish up the waistband. Um, here's what I'm doing with this. I have some nice heavy duty uh, band here because the skirt is heavy uh, so I'm just wrapping it in the skirt fabric and I'm going to sew it down I was hand sewing it I think I'm going to machine sew it because this is going to be the top and no one's going to see it um, and then I am going to stitch the skirt to this and then I've singed the edge of this just like I did with the pockets and I'm just going to fold that over like the grossness of the skirt and cover it up. Um, so that, I need to do that and then I need to sort out the hem uh, which I'm probably not going to take a whole lot of length off um, to do the hem, like maybe do a two inch, like roll it up an inch, roll it over again an inch and then machine sew it. And the reason I'm machine sewing it is because the entire hem is going to end up covered in this glorious faux fur trim that I got on crazy sale from Joann's. Uh, thank you, Thanksgiving sales. Um, so that's gonna go over any like machine sewing stitches that I see or that I produce so that I'm not worried about that. Um, and also, again, Barbie. <laughs> and then once I'm done with that, the next step is draping the overskirts. Happy Sunday, friends. Hi, Zach. He's making a dump run. I wanted to touch base. Yeah, it's super exciting. The lives we lead uh, in quarantine. I wanted to check in with what I'm doing with the waistband because last night it didn't fit. It was too big and the fix that we made did not work um, because when I went to attach to the waistband this morning, or not this morning, at the beginning of nap time, when I went to go attach it to the waistband, I found that uh, the waistband is 37 inches so that there can be overlap in the back so that there can be, you know, the, the closure can function. Um, and the skirt itself around in the circumference should be 37 inches. But the problem is when I went to attach it to the waistband, it was longer than the waistband somehow. Somehow that that was what happened. So what I did was I unpicked all of the hand basting for the pleats and now I am focus maybe now I am pleating it to the waistband directly. And I think what was happening is because the weave on this fabric is so shoddy, which is what's causing it to like fray like crazy uh, at the ends, which I did end up snipping the edges here because they were fraying like nothing and I ended up singeing them so that they are, you know, not going to do that because I'm having to work with them so much. Um, so I'm just pleating it to, to the waistband and pinning it to the waistband and I have the end marked. This is, there's a mark here that marks off an inch and then there's a mark here that marks off an inch. It's folded, but you know. Oh yeah, that happened today. That's my phone. That's fun. Um, so this marks an inch 
and I'm going to pleat the waistband or pleat the skirt to the waistband and then I can make adjustments as I go and then I'm just gonna because this is the front uh, I'm gonna top stitch along where this stitch line is here and then this part is free right now so once I've top stitched the waistband down I am going to fold this over and probably slip stitch that down just so that I don't have a whole bunch of lines of stitching here. But that's what I'm going to do. So I looked back at the pattern and the pattern skirt is apparently one size fits all which is the point of the like lacing strip in the back. It having eyelets and lacing closed is that's how you're supposed to adjust the size. Um, but they're not anticipating that you're wearing this over a corset, I guess, um, which already has lacing back there. But, uh, I was able to, on this side at least, uh, get, excuse me, I was able to get everything down. This is the last official pleat, and then I just threw an extra pleat in there. But every waist size has the same skirt pattern pieces, uh, which... It's a range of like size 14 to 20 and 20 size 20 is the 35 inch waist. And I'm having trouble getting it down to a 35 inch waist um, because of all the excess. Uh, so I can't imagine a size 14, which hang on, let me look at the pattern. This envelope has size 14, 16, 18, and 20. So then your ooh, waist size, for a size 14 is uh, 28 inches because the first one is bust and the second one is H. So a size 14, 28 inch waist, I can't even imagine like the amount of extra faffing about you would have to do in order to get this down to a uh, 28 inch waist when I'm having trouble getting it to 35. And technically the size 20 is a 34 inch waist, uh, mind you. So that's fun. Um, and they want you to do this like gathering bit on the front panel, but that's not that gathered. So I don't know what what they're thinking. Uh, I don't know how this is supposed to work, but you know. We're not doing a mock-up, we're doing it live. So we're gonna make it work. So I did the pleating all across the skirt and followed the markings that I had and I ended up having extra that I had to resolve with an extra pleat on this side um, and not enough on this side even though the waistband is pinned on the center of the skirt. Um, I have suspicions because for one side of the skirt I measured the pleats myself because um, I figured out what the, the measurement was supposed to be and I marked it uh, with a ruler. And on the other side, I followed the markings on the pattern because I decided that because writing on this fabric is a pain in the patogus, that measuring it with a ruler and marking it where like there's not the brocade bit which doesn't mark. Um, was easier than trying to just do the markings based on the pattern. Uh, I can't guarantee that I know which side is which, so I'm not going to say, but one of us is wrong. <laughs> and one of us, our side is not working, which I think is part of the, the problem. That's Zach, he's buying tea for me at the grocery store because it's on sale. And I'm gonna turn into like a cup of tea because tea is life. Um, anyway, so I think that's what's happening. So I'm repleating this side again. I'll check in and let you know. All right, and there she is in all of her waistbanded glory. I had to go in and repleat, uh, as I said, uh, and then I just stitched top stitch the waistband down and then I flipped the fabric over and stitched it, I just quick hand stitch while watching costume. 
I uh, watched Zostine make her Christine from Sleepy Hollow and it was perfection. Uh, that was never on my to make list uh, for costumes, but not gonna lie, kind of thinking about it now. 18th century, not usually my jam, but Zostine's version of that dress is amazing. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave this for right now. It needs a hem and it needs a back closure, but I'm gonna wait on the back closure until the corset is finished. And the of course, the making supplies arrive tomorrow. Um, so that is the plan for that, um, and I'm gonna wait to do the hem until I have decided whether I'm doing an understructure or not. I think I am, I need to order materials for that, but I need to wait to get paid to do that. So that'll be a next month thing. Uh, so the skirt is done, uh, or the underskirt, the petticoat skirt. Um, and I can start working on the corset tomorrow and then working on a mock-up of the bodice. I am going to use potentially to a disastrous effect the bodice for this pattern and I'm going to take off the peplum bit and I'm going to modify the neckline and potentially modify, well definitely modify the sleeves. So once I have the corset made, I can start making up the bodice. The pattern pieces for that are sitting on my desk. Oh, by the way, this is this is what I have left for scrap from this skirt. I had two yards of 118 inches inch wide fabric, and that's what's left. It's not even enough to make my kid a skirt or anything. Um, I do have this piece that is potentially large enough to do something completely ridiculous and maybe lined with fur. Potentially. 2020 holiday Ariel Barbie should probably wear a mask too. Disney princesses are not immune from COVID. Wear a mask, wash your hands, wait six feet apart. Good night.